Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike Nate here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online Bible study. We thank God for you showing up tonight. Um, this is what we call Spirit of Fire at Home, where we just get into the Word of God. Um, we have different topics and subjects that we deal with, and, uh, and we just take that time to get into the Word. Tonight, um, I have something for you. I believe it's going to bless your life. Uh, so at this time, go ahead, click your uh, shares, set your watch parties, tell people that went on because we really believe that this is going to help them tonight. We're going to deal with the subject of crisis, how to handle situations under pressure, how to handle pressured situations and what you need to do. So I believe that I got some some pointers for you, some things to really help you. And I think it's going to be a blessing to your life. So you know what? Go ahead, text somebody, let them know that we're on, let them know we're about to get into this and uh, we're about to teach the word of God and we're about to enter into the presence and power of God and see his power manifested. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity uh, to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, none of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach the Holy Written Word of God reverently. We thank you right now that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open ready to receive the engrafted Word of God. Father, we ask that you increase our territory. We ask right now that you expand our reach for this word to get to the multitudes, to millions upon millions, millions, even billions across this planet. We thank you for the word of God. Now, Father, we believe big of you. We believe great of you. We put our faith out there for greater. We put our faith out there to cast upon large waters into the deep, to cast our net into the deep. We thank you for it. Now, Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. You are the great comforter. You are the counselor. You are the guide. You're the one ready to give us peace. You're the one to show us things to come. We covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as needed. And we thank you for healing, for restoration, for boldness, for faith, for strength that's given to the people of God tonight. So we just thank you in advance um, for this taking place. In Jesus name, glory be to God. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. Um, I want I want to I want to deal with something um, in this in this day and time that there's a lot that's happening. There's a lot that's going on and people need to know how to handle pressure situations. Um, one of the things um, and, and I've and I've been there. I know what pressure can do. I know what crisis situations can do. I know how things can just pop up out of nowhere. I know how things can hit your life. But I want to encourage you today that there is an answer to every dilemma that you come across. There's a way out. There's a way of escape. There's a way to change and to turn that situation around. And so God wants to assist and he wants to help and he wants, wants to get some things across to you tonight. And so even as I was sitting, just thinking about it with everything that's going on, um, things going over, even in Israel right now and bombings and attacks and um, missiles being launched. And the Bible tells us to pray um, even for the peace of Jerusalem and to pray, we're supposed to pray for Israel as well. And so we're releasing our faith to pray for the comfort and for the peace of Israel even now. And so even locally here in the States and, um, you know, gas, uh, you know, cyber attacks, even with the gas pipelines and things of that nature. So I'm kind of dating this message a little bit, but, um, I'm just letting people know this is what things that are going on pandemic that's hit. Uh, we're seeing a turnaround. We're seeing recovery. We're seeing things turn around. But I believe that things will never go back to exactly being the same. But this is a time where we we should be ready to advance like never before. So now when I begin to sit down and I begin to think about all of the things that are going on. Now, there are many things that have taken place even during this past year. There have been couples who separated homes that have been broken, people who've been who've lost jobs. People that are really experiencing depression, people that are experiencing pressure like never before. And pressure can do, can do one of two things. Pressure can create diamonds or pressure can burst pipes. It can either destroy or if you use it right, it can help build and create 
something greater than what first started. It's how we handle the situation. So I want us to talk about that. I want to give you some, I'm going to focus on tonight, five key points into overcoming pressure, how to come out of pressure situations. I've been one of those guys that just, just by nature, I've always been pretty cool and calm under pressure, but I have experienced moments where I've I experienced great intense pressure in my mind and my body. And I remember one moment where I went to the hospital and it was triggered off of stress. And I truly believe that there were things that I was just dealing with mentally, wasn't talking to anybody about it, was trying to handle it internally. And then it began to manifest in my body. And I made a decision. I refuse to allow things in this world, temporal things to stress me to the point that it's making me sick, that it's going to destroy my mind, my life. And I'm like this, no matter what hits, I refuse to worry. And I'm going to refuse to be afraid and refuse to fear. So many times we can put even ourselves under pressure and we can create pressured moments by how we're thinking and feeling about things. And so we want to get to the root of some, some issues and deal with some things tonight. And so what I first want to deal with is let's define what a crisis is. What is a crisis? So it was really interesting when I looked it up, a crisis by definition is an attack of pain or distress or it's disordered function, a disorder in functionality, how things normally flow, how things are normally supposed to run. It's an emotionally significant event or a radical change of status in a person's life. A radical change. Your child comes to you out of the blue and say, mom, dad, I'm pregnant. Radical change. Your, your boss calls you into the office and say, hey, I'm sorry, but I gotta let you go. We got some cutbacks. Radical change. You know, something happens. A loved one dies. Radical change. What is it? Things happen. The, you, the doctor calls you in and they tell you, you know what? I'm sorry, but now you've been diagnosed with cancer. Radical change. What happens now when you get information, when something happens in your life and there's a sudden shift and eviction notice comes, lights are cut off, whatever it is, radical change. How do you handle those moments where there's a sudden radical change of status in your life. It's also by definition, a decisive moment or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending. Something is getting ready to change. Something is getting ready to happen. And now all of a sudden now you feel the pressure, you feel a momentum shift. Now this is going to be a thing. Sometimes some of your greatest crisis is going to be a moment of your greatest catapult into your destiny, into the thing God called and created you to do. Sometimes you getting laid off the job is the very momentum that you needed to kick you out of your comfort zone to go into the thing and to start the business, to start the ministry, to step out and do what God called you to do. There are moments that hit your life and God says there is something that you can do about it. Now I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some points and to help you out tonight. Now, when we start dealing with a crisis, what is one of the first things that we need to do? And I'm going to jump into it now. Number one, one of the first things you need to do when a crisis hits, when something hits your life is number one, calm down, calm down. You got to learn how to get a grip of your emotions. You got to grip your emotions. Emotions are feelings caused by pain or pleasure that can lead you into a direction. And then sometimes because of your emotional state, we make you no know, decisions and an emotional decision usually is not the right one at the time because you're moved by what's going on. And sometimes we can make permanent decisions based off of temporary situations. But when that temporary situation hits suddenly, it can feel like, oh my God, my life is over. What's happening? Everything is shifting. Everything is moving. And we're creatures of habit. And anything that messes up our daily routine, and if you're a person who is not adaptive to change, who is not quick to adapt to change, and then something just shifts in your daily rhythm, your daily schedule, your daily lifestyle, for some people, it can crush them. But for some, they know how to quickly pivot. And one of the first things you got to do, get a hold of your emotions. It is not necessarily the end of the world. Just because that moment hit, because that moment came, there is a recovery plan. There is a way. There is something, listen, there is something on the other side of it. I mean, from death 
to birth, whatever it is, whether someone passed or someone or a new child has come into your life, into your family. Listen, there is a thing God can now watch this. I'm, I'm going to tell you, we, 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 I've been there where, you know, people have, uh, have passed and, um, and things have happened and it's, and it seems like a, a radical shift. I've been there when they call you into the office and all of a sudden, I remember this one time, um, this was some, this might've been a 2008, somewhere around there, uh, something where, uh, um, I was working with this company and, uh, we had a big department meeting and in that department meeting, they were talking about, there was going to be some changes. There was new management that had come in and there was like some people going to be laid off and it's like, okay, we're going to be sending out some calls to people. And so you can just tell in the room tension and, and people wondering, people worried, people afraid, trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? And sure enough, I was one of the people that got a call to come up to the office. And as the manager was talking to me and she had just come into the company. And so, and while she was talking, I, I, on the inside, I was smiling and I even told her, thank you. She was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? Thank you. And what I was telling her was because God was already dealing with me about, um, coming off the job. He was already dealing with me about stepping out into full-time ministry. And so one of the things what ended up happening was this, as a result, at that time, the ministry couldn't handle, um, paying me full time at that time. And so what I ended up doing was having to apply for, um, uh, what you call it? Um, unemployment thing. So, so I applied for unemployment. And so I was actively looking for a job. And at that time, what happened was this, the unemployment took care of my family until, and what began to happen was this, God began to increase the, the income of the ministry so that by the time the, the unemployment ran out, the money was there for me to be paid to be able to do what I needed to do. And so one of the things I had to just realize was this, God, I got to trust you in this moment. So I got to get a grip of my emotions. Now I'm talking about now I got a wife and three kids at this time. And so it's one of those things where, Hey, God, what you going to do now in this situation? Because now I'm trusting you and I'm believing on you. So I got to make sure that I grip my emotions and, and see what I saw was this is an opportunity for God to show up. This is an opportunity for something to turn around. So it was real interesting. And I think the lady was shocked at my response. Because listen, you can imagine, that's not the best news you want to give to somebody, but it's how you handle that moment. There have been moments where, hey, you know, you, you were concerned about something happening, whether it's we've been through evictions, we've been through lights being cut off, we've been through those moments of radical change. And all of a sudden now we got to determine, okay, how are we going to handle this? And a lot of times when the thing finally hits, it doesn't seem as bad as what you even thought it would be. And so now you begin to say, okay, just like you, God got us this place. You can get us another place. Just like you got us that car. You can get us another one. Just like you got me that job. You can now help me to develop a business, to develop a ministry, to, de to get another job. God, you're my source. These things are resources. So whatever needs to be done, God, you're with me. You're for me. So I know this thing is going to turn out right. I know it's going to be all right. And so it's important to calm down. It's important to settle your emotions so that you can now begin to go into this next point. But before I go into the next point, I want to give you the scripture out of James 1 19. James chapter one, verse 19 in the new living translation says it like this. He says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to get angry. Be quick to listen slow to speak, slow to get angry, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. In other words, don't allow your emotions to get the best of you. Don't allow your emotions to get the best of you. Calm down, settle down, think it through, listen carefully, because when you're quiet and you get your emotions calmed down, now, all of a sudden you open up yourself to begin to hear God better concerning that situation. This goes into number two, number two 
in a crisis situation, learn how to assess the situation. You got to stop and assess it. You got to stop and say, okay, let's take a look and see what's going on. Take a step back and take a look at it. What's, what's happening? Because sometimes when you're in the midst of that thing, it's hard to really see your way out. It's hard to see what you need to do. And sometimes you got to kind of detach yourself, even emotionally, and say, okay, okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me, let, let me look at this from another set of eyes. If I was talking to somebody else that was going through this situation, what would I even tell them? How would I, how would I handle this thing? And sometimes you got to say, okay, what's the next move, God? How do I do this? Now, this helps you to gain clarity. Um, and to look at the situation from a different angle or a different viewpoint. Just like I told you that, you know, some people are like, okay, you getting fired from a job. Some people think it's the end of the world, but it could be the start of you walking into purpose that now take this moment to go ahead and establish the new, the new thing to establish the vision that you've always had, the desire, the dream, take advantage of moments. No matter, sometimes the situations are different. You know, sometimes it's different for a person. Sometimes that, okay, a, a husband and a father of three children versus somebody that's single, no children, living with their parents, that, okay, now I know for you, that might be a better situation because it's easier for you to pivot than for somebody that has greater responsibility on them and have more people to be responsible for. But no matter what situation, no matter what, um, end of the spectrum that you're on, you can assess the situation and see what's the way that I can come out of this. How can I handle this situation? And so sometimes it's good. And this is important. Sometimes it's good to get another set of eyes to help you look at what you're going through. This is what counseling is for. This is important. Y'all, this is important. Sometimes you need a fresh set of eyes to look at the situation with you. Because sometimes you're so emotionally attached in that moment, you can't see clearly. So sometimes you need somebody to come and to speak life into you. You need someone that sometimes to come and to help you to settle down and to get yourself together so that now let's work through this together. Let's talk through it. Let's assess the situation. Let's see what's an answer. Let's see what resources are available. It's not the end of the world. This too shall pass. Listen, we can overcome this thing. And this is why it's important. The Bible declares in Luke 4, 14 and 28 in the New Living Translation, it says it like this. He says, but don't, uh, but don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? In other words, don't start doing something until you really sit back and assess it. What is it that I need to do? Okay, I need to move. Okay, if I need to move, how much is that going to cost? What's moving cost? What needs to go? What stuff can I really take with me? Do I need to now get a, um, um, a storage unit to put some stuff in to go into this? I may have to downsize from a four bedroom home to a two bedroom apartment just for the moment. And so just to get myself stabilized because I might need to build a stable floor or okay, what happens now? This child comes and says, hey, dad, mom, I'm pregnant. Whoa, now this is another mouth to feed. This is another person coming into the home. I'm talking about a child, one of your children that now you're still responsible for. Now all of a sudden they bring in a child with them. That's a radical change. Okay, let's calm down. Let's settle down. Let's assess the situation. Let's deal with some things here. Let's deal. And I'm going to get to the next part because I don't want to um, get ahead of myself. But now let's calculate. What is it that needs to be done? I know what that's like. Sometimes you got to stop. And sometimes you're so in the moment, you ain't got time to be afraid. You ain't got time to cry. You ain't got time to do all this stuff because decisions have to be made. Things have to be done. And so you got to sometimes learn how to pivot quickly and have a QRT, quick recovery time to say, okay, this is what I need to do in this moment. This is what needs to be a, a, addressed. Let's just go into that moment. Sometimes there's some people who just work well under pressure. There's some people it's like they don't get rattled. Some people shut down under pressure. The first thing they do, they just go into a corner, they soak, 
they get into a state of depression. And sometimes when you got multiple people dealing with the situation together and one knows how to handle pressure quickly and the other one is like, man, I got to pick you up while we still going through this. And it's like, come on now, let's do this together. We got to work together to get this thing done. And so God is saying this, there is strength that's available. There are things that are right there that are, that are in you. There are people around you. Tap into people. Don't let pride bring you down. Pride comes before a fall. And so sometimes you need help to come out of that situation. And it's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. There is nothing wrong with asking for help. It is now wisdom to ask for help when you're in a trouble situation, a crisis situation. And sometimes like, man, I need somebody else to help me look at this with me because at this moment, this thing hit me out of the blue. This thing is now racked my family. This thing has hit my household. This thing has hit my business. This thing has hit my ministry. Whatever it is, begin to assess the situation. Now watch this. In the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, Proverbs 11, 14 in the Amplified, it says it like this, where no wise guidance is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Where there, watch this, where no wise guidance is, the people fall. All of us need wise guidance, whether it's the, the spirit of God on the inside, whether it's the Bible, where we read scriptures from it, whether it's a book where we get information, whether it's a person we sit down and talk to, we need wise guidance when situations hit as to know how to handle it. And sometimes what happens is this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I like this one. Sometimes you need to learn how to plan for potential, potential setbacks. When you have contingency plans in place for certain things, just like people do it for business. They have plans, evacuation plans. If something hits, if an earthquake hits, if the power shuts off, this is what you do. Don't get on the elevator. Take the stairs. We have routes already set up, exit plans. We have people with, within the company who've been trained to know how to handle things. If a tornado hits, a natural disaster hits, this is the contingency plan. So when or if, if or when a moment hits, we're not caught off guard. we prepared for this. Sometimes some people think that's a lack of faith. That's not always a lack of faith. That's a lack, that's, that's a, um, a thing of wisdom. God did it with the children of Israel. Watch this. Um, when he told, um, uh, when he told Joseph, when he told Joseph, he gave Pharaoh the dream, but then he gave Joseph the interpretation. There's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of famine in the seven years of plenty, put away 20% of everything that comes in because the famine is coming. A sudden change is coming. A sudden shift is coming. So prepare yourself for the shift. Prepare yourself for the crisis that's going to hit the land, the famine that's going to hit the land. See, the Bible talks about even with the Holy Spirit, he will show you things to come. He'll warn you of things that come that's coming ahead to help you to adjust and to get your mind right and to get your house right, to get your life right, to handle the sudden pivot, to handle the sudden shift to handle the sudden change. So we wanna make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit and now obeying what he's telling us to do. You know, you're hearing, okay, don't spend right now. I want you to begin to save $10,000. Why? Why I gotta do that? That's why we do, even in financial, uh, financial experts tell you all the time, save three to six months of your monthly expenses. So just in case, you know, what we call emergency funds. So just in case an emergency rises up, you lose the job. You're not tripping and spazzing out because you have enough money and savings to take care of your weekly, your daily, your monthly expenses without losing a beat while it's giving you time to regroup, to find another job, to launch something else, to do whatever else. This is why you do those things. It's something, man, I'm telling you. Listen, so you're not tripping when the brakes go out on the car, not while you're driving, but you know, they're going bad or the tires are going out or something happens, the car doesn't start, but you got the money that's there. You don't trip out. All you gotta do, I know it's inconvenient for the moment, but now you can just call the tow man, come on, get it, take it to the repair shop, get it fixed and go ahead, pick that thing up. You got the money there, you don't trip out. And so it helps you because you assess things, but also you're planning ahead for things. So I'm throwing that in there uh, where this is concerned. Now I wanna, I wanna share with this number three. Let's, let's deal with this real quick. What time am I working with? Okay. Number three, 
is, and this is very important, this is a very important step. Number three is to deal with the pain and hurt of what just happened. You got to deal with the pain and hurt. Because I know sometimes, and I just shared a little bit earlier, that when things hit suddenly, sometimes you're so in the survival mode of just trying to get the next thing done that sometimes you don't deal with the trauma of what just happened. And so sometimes you got to go back and take a look at what happened. How did it affect me? How, how, and a lot of times people just move on in life and you keep moving from crisis to crisis to crisis, but you've never dealt with the pain, the hurt, the pain, the hurt. And now you're trying to figure out and others around you trying to figure out why are you so mean? Why are you so bitter? Why are you so defensive? Why are you so protective of things? Because really it's a residual effect of all the trauma that you've been through and all the pain that you never dealt with. What do you do with that? The book of James 5, 16 and Amplified says it like this. He says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed. That's the reason. And restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available that's dynamic in its working. So now getting that thing out, getting that pain out, talking about it, dealing with it. How did it affect you? How now? OK, well, it hurt. OK, it hurt. Now, what's the what's the recovery plan of it? OK, how are we going to deal with this pain? How are we going to deal with these thoughts? How are we going to deal with these negative emotions? How are you going to deal with this toxic behavior? How are you going to handle what you just went through? It was a painful thing. Now watch this. Some people out there, because you've gone through some things, some of the things you've gone through, because you've never verbally admitted it, you never verbally said it, but on the inside, it's caused you to begin to question God because in your heart, you've been saying, God, why did you let this happen? Why did you allow this? How come this happened to me? I've been doing this. I've been living, quote unquote, for you. I've been praying. I've been confessing. And I've been doing all the stuff the preacher's been telling me to do. But this thing still hit. So God, now all of a sudden now, it's attacking your confidence in God. It's attacking your confidence in his word. It's attacking your belief system and your core values. And because it's never been addressed, if you don't watch it, you will slowly slip away from God and not even realize it. And before you know it, you don't believe no more. You then you say stuff. I'm leaving the church. I want to do my own thing. I don't trust stuff because you never dealt with the trauma and the pain and the hurt. And sometimes the bad doctrine understanding that you have in an area that's even causing that. And sometimes it's a legitimate question. But if you don't have somebody that's there, that's there to help navigate you through that season, season in that moment, if you don't watch it, then before you know it, that stuff settles into your heart. And we got to say, OK, this is what happened. Sometimes we're so and I get it. I get it. We're so quick to make the we, we're supposed to make our positive confessions based on, on the word of God. And I, I speak it. I teach and all of that. Sometimes we do stuff like we ask people, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I'm empowered to prosper. I'm overcoming in every area of life. Yes, you're supposed to say that. But now, how are you doing? Man, I'm hurt. Okay. Why are you hurt? Well, I'm really hurt because, boom. Okay, let's deal with that. Because if we don't get to the root of the matter, the fruit will keep popping up. And you'll keep trying to figure out why does this keep popping up? Because you never dealt and got down to the root of that thing. Yeah. See, listen, I've been there. When God show up and, and show me things supernatural and say, okay, this is the root of what's been going on in your life. And this day you free forever. Now go and talk to this person and deal with this person. And go. I know what those things are like. Because sometimes we're so busy dealing with the fruit of things that we don't get to the root of that matter and really get healed from it. So God wants you to be healed. He, ooh, I like that term. He wants you to be healed and sealed. Healed and sealed. Healed in that area. Have you ever seen something? This is why it's important, like a wound that doesn't heal right, a bone that doesn't heal right, and it doesn't close up properly. 
Sometimes you got to now go back and manipulate it to get it right. And doctors sometimes re-break bones and reset bones so that it can heal properly. And so one of the things we got to do is, have you dealt with the wound? Have you really dealt with the hurt? Have you dealt with the trauma of losing that loved one? Have you dealt with the trauma of losing that business? It's shut down. And then inwardly, you're still feeling like a failure. And that's why it's holding you back from moving forward in anything else, because the fear of what just happened, the hurt, the disappointment of what just happened, and now is hindering you. And it's been 10 years and you still stuck in that pattern and you still stuck in that holding pattern in your life. And God is saying, it's time for you to overcome that thing so that I can fully restore to you. Glory to God. The years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar have stolen the years that the enemy has stolen from you by keeping you in a holding pattern. I'm declaring God is saying, I want you free so that now I can give you the back pay that's old and do unto you says the Lord in Jesus name. Somebody need to say amen on that one. You type it, you say it, God wants to restore. Now watch this. This is why it's going to be important. Um, I'm, I'm going to share this scripture real quick. In Mark 11, 25 through 26, it says, whenever you stay in praying, this is the amplified version. Whenever you stay in praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them and let it drop. Leave it. Let it go. In order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings. Now, holding on to unforgiveness will keep you in a holding pattern, remaining bitter, not letting it go. Sometimes you just got to drop it. Even if the person never comes back to apologize, you need to let it go. You need to let it go. They are gone, moved on with their life, and you still mad because they never said that they were sorry. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. And you have to move on because you will stay stuck in the past. Listen, it is sad. Years can go by. And in your mind, it's just like it happened yesterday. God says, let it go. Let it go. Let, let go to snide remark. Let go to cold shoulder. It wasn't that they said something. For some people, you mad at folk because they didn't say anything. And you just quietly moved away. And now you've been isolated for years. And God says you need to reconnect. Let it go. Let it go. Amen. See, you need to deal, you need to deal with the negative emotions that are attached to those painful situations. See, see, this is, <laughs> you know, there, there are people who it's like it's like a child that had a baby out of wedlock and the disappointment of the parents towards the child. And it's like still penalizing the child. And then it's like you almost penalize the baby. And it's almost like you look at that you and really what it is is if for some parents it ain't the fact that the child did it is the fact that you feel like a failure because the child did it and you more mad at yourself and then you mad at them for not sticking with it and you got to let that stuff go you got to you got to move on you have to move on you got to have listen is that qrt folks quick recovery time you got to let it go you got to let it go you got to let it go. So what? You missed the opportunity. A new one will come around. So let that one go. It was, it's over. The relationship is over. Let it go. That person has gone on, gotten married, got a family and happy. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Now watch this. Number four, let's deal with this real quick. You got to come against the fear that rises up. Come against the fear. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving, cringing, and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So, okay, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. We got to come against that spirit of fear. You come against that fear by declaring your faith and saying, wait a minute, 
My God supplies all my need. My God will help me through this matter. This too shall pass. All things are working together for my good. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against me in judgment, I'll condemn it and show it to be in the wrong. That was the other scripture I wanted to tell you. Isaiah 54 and 17 out of the New Living Translation. It reads like this, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. No weapon formed, no weapon turned against you will succeed. It might be formed, but it won't succeed. It won't prosper. It won't work. He says you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Listen, you don't have to get even with folk. You don't have to speak negative about them. You just go ahead and show them to be in the wrong by demonstrating the character of Christ. Now, this is the crazy thing. What if they were right in what they said about you? What if you did what they said? Now, all you need to do now is, okay, God, I've already made a decision. I've taken ownership of what I've done, my part to play in it. I repent of it. That means I change my mind, direction, and attitude about that thing, and I go in the right direction. And now I form a new character. I form new habits. I'm going to do this thing the right way now. And so now, so no matter if they keep trying to bring up what happened in the past, all I can do at this point, at this moment is to allow my character to show that I have changed. I'm going in the right direction. Whether you love me or not, I'm moving forward. So watch this. My success will not be dependent upon your approval of me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yup. Some of y'all need to shout right there. Yeah. You still trying to get somebody else that, that left you to try to give approval to the new season. See, I've changed. I've changed. I've changed. And you looking for their approval. Them people ain't even thinking about you. You need to move on, move on. I keep, man, I just keep telling you, I keep sensing that move on, <laughs> move on, get new friends. God will give you new ones. He'll restore. He'll bring people around you that celebrate you, not people that tolerate you. And you keep trying to force fit yourself in circles that not, don't even want you. Let it go. I don't know who this is for. <laughs> Let it go. It's okay. It's okay. You may not have been even called to be amongst those. God is calling you elsewhere. Move on. Come on now. Stop going back. This is what happened to Lot's wife. She kept looking back at Sodom and then she turned into a pillar of salt. He listen, he's like, just go, leave this place, leave that place. I'm telling you to go somewhere else. And it's like, don't even turn back. Don't even look back. Stop looking back. Let it go. God got something greater for you. Let it go. Glory to God. This comes into number five. This is the last point I want to make. Develop a recovery plan for your advancement. Develop a recovery plan for your advancement. Recognize that God is a very present help in time of trouble. It says it in Psalm, the 46th Psalm, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Very present. Very present. Very present help. That means he's always there right now to give you the answer to come out of the dilemma that you're in right now. Very present. Now watch this. The very people who helped you to assess the situation can also help you develop a plan of how to handle, overcome, and come out of it. There is a way to handle whatever you are going through right now. There's a way to handle it. There's a way to handle it. There's a way to handle whatever you're going through. There's a way to come out. There's a strategy. There is a plan. This is where you get, you sit down. You pray things out. You can pray things out in the spirit. You ask God for wisdom. He says, if any man lack wisdom, let him um, ask of God who gives to all men liberally and abrade of not. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. The multitude of counselors, their safety. You see somebody else that has overcome that type of situation. You can sit down and say, man, how did you come out of this? How did you handle this situation? Get some feedback, get, get some information. You're not supposed to just necessarily go talk to everybody, but find trusted voices that you can sit down to assist and to help and to give you that input. Now you can take that input, take it before God and say, okay, God, how do I apply this to me? Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and do this thing and learn how to take it step by step 
and trust God for the strength to endure the supernatural turnaround. God is strengthening you. God is keeping you. God is there with you. For some of you, I hear this, it's time to rebrand yourself. Rebrand yourself. What do I mean by that? Sometimes people remembered you one way, but change has come. Change has come in your life. And now it's like, let me reintroduce myself to you world. This is the new me. This is the new me. Just like Saul turned into Paul. This is the new me. And Paul said it like this. I have wronged no man because a radical change took place in his life. Yeah, I know he came from being a sinner to a saint. And I'm talking about now rebranding from people who've been saints for a while. And you messed up. You've been a saint for a minute and you knew better. And you've been a saint and something just hit. You had a bad moment. Somebody got a divorce and their ministry ain't been the same since. Somebody, something happened, radical change. And you've been in a funk. You've been in a cloud ever since. And that cloud has been hovering over you. That cloud of depression, that cloud of guilt because you done slept with somebody. And you know that you did. And then you feel guilty about it. And Satan has been hurting you. You used to be. Glory, mm, glory to God. I was going to just let it flow. Man, I should have just let it go. Um, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> I'm going to say this. You used to be prominent in ministry. You used to be a leader in ministry. Then all of a sudden you got off. And it ain't been the same since. God's saying this. Get back into position. He says, I've been, I've forgiven you a long time ago. You need to forgive yourself now. And you've cried and you've cried about those things that you've done. And you feel like it's just hard to come out of it, God. God bringing you out. You've already been made free. You gotta, you gotta believe it at this point. It comes to a point you gotta believe that God is forgiving you. God has forgiven you. And he loves you. So forgive yourself. The strategy is there. The plan is there. So don't forgive, folks. Now, I'm just quick recap. Number one, calm down. Get your emotions straight. Number two, assess the situation. Number three, deal with the pain and the hurt of what just happened. Number four, come against the fear that tries to rise up. Number five, develop a recovery plan for advancement. Step by step, God will give you what to do to recover all. Come on, David. David said, as Ziglag, all was taken from him. And he said, Lord, shall I pursue? Everybody turned against him. His soldiers turned against him. He was in battle with them. Everybody's family was taken and stuff taken. But now he got to go to God on his own. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself, folks. And God says, pursue, pursue and you shall recover all. Pursue it and you shall recover. Sometimes you're just thinking the recovery is just going to come. But the recovery comes with the pursuit. He says, pursue it now. Go back at it again. He says, you shall recover all. See, watch this. Recovery of all, sometimes you think it's going to look exactly how it was before you lost it. Sometimes the recovery looks even better. Usually the recovery is better than what you lost. You got to understand though, but it looks different sometimes. Sometimes it can look the same, but I want you to be ready. Even if it looks a little different, it's still recovery. It's still recovery. And you still will be fulfilled in doing what God created and called you to do. Amen. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for those that are out there that are going through a crisis. I pray for those who are dealing with loss, who dealt with depression and dealing with it. For those that have been beating themselves up, for those that are still in mourning for things, lost opportunities, lost wages, lost jobs, lost loved ones, lost opportunities, whatever the issue is, I pray for healing right now for them. I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I ask that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. I ask that you begin to show them the recovery plan. Show them the acts that you show them the people that they can talk to, the trusted voices 
the confidants that they can talk to, the safe places where they can unpack their emotions and feelings. And I also pray for divine healing, that you would do an inward working in them and get into the very crevices of their soul to uproot anything that has been holding them back. And I declare freedom and I declare wholeness in their lives and total restoration of everything lost. Whatever needs to be restored, I call it restored. Whatever needs to be removed, I call it removed. And Father, whatever needs to remain out of their lives remains out of their lives. And whatever needs to be added will be added. And Father, I thank you. Healthy relationships. I thank you for the removal of toxic relationships. And I declare healing and wholeness over their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Bless you so much. Hey, this opportunity to turn it around, turn it around for your good. Hey, whoo. Hallelujah. I believe that this helps somebody and that somebody go back, listen to it again and just, just go over it. Just go over it. Just go over it again. Sow it into your spirit. Sow it into your heart. Chew on it. Think about it. See what God tells you and reveals to you to do. Okay. Praise God. Now I always want to give an opportunity for people to get born again. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, listen, that's you. and you gotten born again, we want you to contact us. Let us know. Hey, I'm born again and they, I need, I need some information. I need to know how to live now. I recommend this ministry to you. We'll help teach you and train you. We're in the process of developing some things for you to help you. We do discipleship classes and things of that nature. We want you to be a part of it. We will be announcing some of those things soon. New classes that we have, that we have coming up that, um, I'm even going through the process of training some people to teach and to train to help me in this vision and to do this thing well. And so listen, we want to help you. We want to help you. That's why we're here. God gave me a mandate to go teach his people who they are. And so we want to be a blessing to you. So if you desire to connect with this ministry, listen, contact us, let us know. You can send us information via our social media platforms, and we will have somebody to get back in contact with you. Okay. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. Uh, we thank you for showing up tonight. Also at this time, we want you, if you desire to sow, there's some information coming up as to how you can sow, how you can support financially this ministry. We could not do what we do without the continued faithful support of you, the listening audience, our members, the Spirit of Our Fellowship, our partners, supporters, and friends. We thank God for you. And as you give, we believe it'll be given back unto you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. We declare and decree that you're out of debt, all needs are met, that you have plenty more to put in store. So even as those uh, options are coming up, whatever he tells you to do, whatever God lays on your heart to do, do it. And we thank God for you tonight. Well, friends, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message. Um, on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, uh, and us at the Spirit of Fire Fellowship family, we just want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight. For Spirit of Fire at Home, where our motto is changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. May the grace and peace of God be upon you all, and may God's favor reign in your life and shine. May you be protected and watched over by the angels of God, and may all that you set your hands to prosper, flourish, and work. We love you. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you all. I love you guys. See you real soon. Peace.